Greetings. My name is Kevin Regick, and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Here we are passionate about discussing issues, and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. I believe that by sharing our experience, this conversation started with the question, has the concept of righteousness been removed from the church? And my immediate response or reply to the question was, you know, regardless, if righteousness is taught or preached in a church, it has always been a hard issue. The Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way in Psalms 37, 23. Concerning this text, a good man can be considered a righteous man because God delights in his way. You know, I enjoy cooking. It is a form of therapy for me. <laughs> so when I read or read the word steps, my mind quickly associated it with a recipe because every recipe contains steps to be followed. The Bible could be considered a cookbook really for, for living, which contains a, a multitude of recipes. But to help me explain this, I invited a friend of mine to briefly share on the subject and he couldn't physically be here today, so he sent the video. Check this out. And now cooking with Chef Reverend. Praise God and good cooking. Amen. Our recipe this morning comes from the book of Crocker. Amen. Betty Crocker. Deacon, if you will. <coughs> Chapter 14, <laughs> recipe 12. <laughs> Cheese souffle. Mm -hmm. Ingredients, butter, eggs, Cheese. Stop right there. <laughs> butter, eggs, and cheese. Oh. Butter, eggs, and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> now, the Apostle Betty gives us the ingredients. Oh, yeah. Now, I remember when I was young in the ways of cooking. Mm -hmm. Brother Deacon, I was headstrong. Oh. I would give the ingredients and just start cooking. Oh. I was out there, y'all. Oh. And I would say, Lord, why does my souffle taste so nasty? Why nasty? Foolish pride. Mm -hmm. Foolish pride, you don't want that. And God would call me up often. He would call me. He would say, Cletus. That's your name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Follow the recipe. Amen. Follow Amen. the recipe. Amen. Follow the recipe. Amen. Follow the recipe. Amen. Follow the recipe. Amen. Follow the recipe. Amen. Read on. <laughs> Pull mixture in pan uh -huh. and heat at 300 degrees well, for 15 minutes. How long? 15, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. <laughs> now, I know what's going on in some of y'all's kitchens. Uh-oh. Temptation start creeping. <laughs> the devil is always working, always saying, you can do it fast. Wait, you you can do it easy. Yes. What am I talking about, y'all? The, the microwave. microwave! The microwave is the devil's box. Yes. <laughs> Would Wood Gang Puck use a microwave? No. no. Would Chef Bo R.D. use a microwave? No. Would Emerald Lagasse Bam, Lord have mercy, use a microwave? No. Would Arlo Rattenbacher use a microwave? Anyway, <laughs> would a microwave make such a divine blessing? <laughs> no, no. Got to tell y'all one thing. Always wear oven mitts. Ooh. I just burnt my hand. Yeah. Ooh, I burnt my hand. Yeah. next week as we prepare our delicious baby Jesus back ribs. 
Amen. Good cook. There comes a point in each of our lives when we must make conscious choices about God. Does he exist? Does he care about me? Is there really a heaven and hell? These questions represent a crossroad. Now how they are answered will determine what direction we take. God promises that when we seek him with all of our hearts, we will find him in Jeremiah 29, 13. When we find him, we have a choice to make, however. Do we continue following our own inclinations or do we surrender to his will? Romans 6 and 13 states, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Surrender is a battle term. It implies giving up all rights to the conqueror. When an opposing army surrenders, they lay down their arms and the winners take control over them. Surrendering to God works the same way. God has a plan for our lives and surrendering to him means that we set aside our own plans and eagerly seek his. The good news is that God's plans for us are always in our best interest. Unlike our own plans that often lead to destruction, our God is a wise and benevolent victor. He conquers us only to bless us, not to harm us. Now there are different levels of surrender, all of which affect our relationship with God. Initial surrender to the drawing of the Holy Spirit leads to salvation. When we let go of our attempts to earn God's favor and rely upon the finished works of Jesus Christ on our behalf, we become a child of God. It's another level. And all of that is great, right? But there are times of greater surrender during a Christian's life that bring deeper intimacy with God and greater power in service. The more areas of our lives we surrender to him, the more room there is for the filling of the Holy Spirit. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we exhibit traits of his character. The more we surrender to God, the more our old self-worshiping nature is replaced with one that resembles Christ. Why, that's why Paul instructs us to let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. That occurs as we surrender more and more of ourselves to him. In Romans 6.13, it says that God demands that we surrender the totality of ourselves. He wants the whole of us, not a part. It says, do not offer any part of yourself to sing as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Jesus said that his followers must deny themselves, which is another call to surrender. The goal of the Christian life can be summed up by Galatians 2 and 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Such a life of surrender is pleasing to God. It results in the greatest human fulfillment and it will reap ultimate rewards for us. In Matthew 6.33, it tells us, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. See, the first step we are to take is that of seeking. 
To seek, uh, when used in a religious sense, first denotes the seeking of that which is laws that is undertaken by God to save it or to find it. Second, it denotes a shepherd looking for the lost sheep. We see that in Matthew 18 and 12. Or a woman who lost a coin in Luke 15 and 8. But the same term can also be used by the uh, demand of God, which stems from the principle that to whom much is given, much is required. As a verb, to seek can impass a, a range of actions, including searching uh, diligently, uh, asking, consulting, finding, discovering, inquiring, uh, plogging, examining, and, and, and requesting. The Greek word translated to seek carries two distinctions that should be considered together. First, it means to seek something that has been lost. Second, it also means to demand what is due. We find that supported in Luke 13 and 6. In talking about loss, I'm not referring to something or someone that has wandered off. You know, like a child wanders away from you in the supermarket and can't be located for a moment. No, the loss I'm referring to is that which has been taken, something that has been taken from you. See, what has been lost, what has been taken from you and I? Well, for one thing, our relationship with God and the freedom from the forces of darkness those was taken from us. We lost them in the garden by way of Adam's disobedience. If we are going to actively and successfully seek God, it must be done in and with faith. One must believe that God is far above any problems, situations, or circumstances that we may face. You know, there is a saying that sorrow looks back. Worry looks around, but faith looks up. And today, here in America, I can't think of any other time in during my lifetime that we need to not look back, not look around, but look up. First Chronicles 22 and 19 tells us, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. The heart and soul, which represents the intellect, will, and emotions, must be in a position to sense the presence of God. In this position of faith, determination, hope, and expectation is a greater ability to fulfill that seeking. See, within the context of this statement is a powerful lesson we need to consider. In verses 17 and 18, David is charging his son Solomon privately on his responsibilities as the new king. In verse 19, he addresses the leaders of Israel. He orders the leaders to help his son Solomon, reminding them that God was with them. His primary charge to them, however, was that they should devote their hearts and souls to the Lord. And I thought that was very interesting, and I thought it really spoke about the character of David. He, he didn't tell the leaders or, or suggest to the leaders that they uh, submit and bow to his son Solomon as king. He knew that if they were faithful to God, they would be faithful to Solomon. See, if one places a human duty above duty to God, then all else will fail. Seeking the Lord is a description of the whole of the believer's life. First, we seek the Lord by endeavoring to obey him in everything. Let us test everything we do by the word of God. Let us seek to fulfill not only the commands we find in those words that are plain, but also those about which there is a question. And oftentimes that's our greatest struggle. 
The verse's meaning is as direct as it sounds. We are to seek the things of God as a priority over the things of the world. Primarily, it means that we are to seek the salvation and relationship that is inherent in the kingdom of God. The second step we are to take is finding. Seeking without finding leads to frustration and action. Frustration and action is destruction. Destruction comes in all forms and has many targets. It can be aimed at you individually. It can be aimed, aimed at your family, your business, your friends, your church, your government. To find involves learning something previously unknown. Frequently, encompassing an element of surprise, uh, uh, to find also incorporates uh, learning the location of something by intentionally searching for it. The term find is primarily defined as a verb meaning to discover, obtain, or become aware of something often through search or effort. It can also be used to express opinions or judgments, such as considering something to be a certain way. As a noun, in some contexts, find is associated with searching for or discovering righteousness, or spiritual truths, as suggested by the references in many religious texts. Our seeking should result in finding, meaning there should be a greater understanding and awareness of God and his will and his ways due to our seeking. Isaiah 55 and 6 informs us to seek the Lord where he may be found. This is a phrase that encourages people to actively pursue God while he is readily available and accessible. Essentially, don't delay in seeking a relationship with God, period. Now, this verse encompasses the importance of seeking God now, as he is willing to be found by those who actively pursue him. The text also seems to communicate a window of opportunity and no room for delay with the instruction to seek the Lord while he may be found, Isaiah stressed the urgency and seriousness of God's summons. The prophet Amos communicated the same sense of urgency, repeatedly issuing the Lord's appeal to seek me and live in Amos 5, 4 through 7, and 14 and 15. Dedicating our lives to the pursuit of God is a matter of life and death, but it is also a matter of choice. If we procrastinate, the only opportunity to respond to his invitation may just run out. The third step will be our focus, and it is on surrendering. This is a topic that is often misunderstood and even feared by some. What does it truly mean to surrender to God? Can it actually be done? And if so, how? Uh, many of us has a, have a misconception of surrendering to God. We often associate it with weakness or losing control of our lives. However, true surrender is quite the opposite. It is a powerful act of faith and trust in God. Surrendering to God means letting go of our own desires, plans, and expectations and submitting ourselves fully to his will. It means acknowledging God, uh, uh, or rather acknowledging that God knows what is best for us and surrendering our own limited understanding to his perfect wisdom. Now, I understand that this may sound daunting and even intimidating. We like to be in control of our lives, and the thought of giving that up is scary. But let me assure you that surrendering to God is the best decision 
we can ever make. You know, when when I was first saved, uh, seeking <laughs> deliverance from my addiction to crack cocaine, uh, my acceptance of the Lord was not in totality, so to speak. You see, I accepted Jesus as my savior because I wanted him to save me from the pains of my lifestyle. I wanted him to save me from the pains that was torturing my mind, the guilt, the shame, the self-condemnation and so forth. But I did not want to release my life to him. I still felt that I could control it if I could just eliminate the pain. So I accepted him as my savior for fire insurance, so to speak, to be honest. But not as Lord. And so therefore, in reality, I had not surrendered my life to him. That change by the grace and mercy of God and our relationship continued to increase the more and the more. And I'm so grateful for his patience and him giving me the opportunity to make that shift. You see, when we surrender to God, we no longer have to bear the weight of our burdens alone. We can trust that he will guide us and provide us, uh, provide for us in every step of the way. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Surrendering to God does not mean relinquishing responsibility for us nor does it mean passively resigning ourselves to whatever happens. Surrendering to God involves submitting every aspect of one's life to his will and his guidance. This process includes seeking to please God by surrendering areas such as health, decisions, finances, relationship, and even our future. It requires settling uh, setting aside one's own plans and eagerly seeking God's plans, which is always in our best interest. The act of surrender is compared to a battle term, implying giving up all rights to the conqueror. <laughs> Practical steps toward surrender include submitting one area of life to God at a time, so to speak and being honest about personal struggles and hurt. And that's submitting one area of our lives to God, put it one at a time, makes it easier. It, 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 it incorporates that saying about how do you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. Ultimately, surrendering to God is described as a choice between following one's own sinful inclinations or seeking God's will. Moreover, surrendering to God means surrendering our sins and our weaknesses and our strengths. We must acknowledge that we are imperfect and in need of God's grace. When we surrender our sins to him, we he can cleanse us and make us new. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have gone away and all things have become new. Surrendering to God also means surrendering our fears, our doubts, our insecurities, our anger, our resentment, our rage, our unforgiveness. And instead of trying to control everything or everyone and relying on our own strength, we can rest in the assurance that God is in control and he is more than capable of handling any situation in our lives. So how can we surrender to God? Firstly, it requires an act of faith and trust. 
believing that God is who he say he is and that he will do what he has promised to do. It also requires humility, admitting that we need God's help and guidance in our lives. That we can surrender to God through prayer, asking him to take control and lead us according to his will. We can also surrender by studying and applying his word in our life, seeking to align our hearts and our minds with his truth. And as we journey on, let us remember these words. Surrender to what is, let go of what was, and have faith in what will be. May we continue to surrender our hearts, minds, and souls to God, and may he, may he continue to be patient with us and do more than we could ever ask or imagine with our lives. Take our time together today to use it as a catapult to really start seeking, finding, and surrendering to God. You know, my journey uh, in, in as a Christian, uh, like many of your journeys probably, my journey began with chaos and confusion. <laughs> uh, as I said, coming, uh, dealing with a, a, a 14, 12 year addiction at that point to crack cocaine, uh, transitioning my faith from that of Islam to Christianity was not easy. But as I surrendered more and more to this initially unknown God, I found clarity and direction through my seeking and finding. And I finally came to a point of understanding the need and benefit to let go of my need to feel I needed to control everything and instead just trust and God ordering my steps and enjoying the journey. You know, sometimes it's not about reaching a Pacific destination, but rather it's about the journey itself. And as we continue on in our uh, journey to surrendering and building our relationship with God, yes, we're going to encounter obstacles. We're going to encounter challenges, we're going to encounter crisis of faith. In America, many of us are right now dealing with a crisis of faith. You know, sacrifice in the Bible means that we give to God the best we have. It is the finest form of worship. And sacrifice is not giving up things, but giving uh, to God with joy the best that we have. We have uh, uh, dragged down the ideal of surrender and of sacrifice. And we have taken the life out of words and made them mean something sad and weary and despicable, which in the Bible, they are the very opposite. To go out and surrender to God means the surrendering of the miserable sense of my own unimportance. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's important because for many of us, we get caught up in our search for significance. And really that search for significance coincides with us finding, relating to, and surrendering to God. You know, it may not always be easy. Matter of fact, I know it's not always easy in, in building our relationship with God and surrendering our lives to Him, but it's worth it. But when we surrender, we are releasing all control and allowing God to work in and through us. 
We are opening ourselves up to his perfect will and plan for our lives. And I want to leave you with this one final thought. Surrendering to God is not a one-time event, but a continuous act throughout your life. Every day we must choose to surrender ourselves, trusting that he knows what is best for us every day. So again, in closing, I want to encourage you to let go of your fears and doubts and surrender to God fully. I promise that you will find peace, joy, and fulfillment in this act of surrender. Weight will be taken off of you. So with that, uh, we come to the end of our journey today. Uh, we have explored the depths of our soul and uncovered the fears and doubts that hold us back from living a fully surrendered life to God. And I trust now that God's goodness and his faithfulness will invade your life so that you will know without a doubt that he is always with us and will never lead us astray. Let us allow his love to flow through us and guide us in every step of the way. What say you? Well, I hope you enjoyed the ride today. Uh, please get a chance to subscribe to this channel by clicking on the button, like us, uh, and hit the notification buttons and revisit our channel for more engaging and enlightening uh, sessions. Uh, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please click on the button above, label Prayer of Salvation, or the link in the description section. Otherwise, thank you for spending some of your time with me. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.